Sorry guys, I've already filmed three videos and this is the first one I get to redo. This microphone needed a new battery. From issue there. And I used that microphone. I used to use them for God only as one audio channel. So at last we're back again. So today we're looking at the Gigabyte A520M D2H. It's a micro ATX board. It probably doesn't support overclocking. However, it is $60. It is a 500 series board. It supports all the 3,000 and probably 4,000 chips that will be coming out. But the question is, is, is it worth when you're going super budget to save the 20 to $30 from like a lower end B550 board? Yes, you can go with a better B450 board, but there's gonna be limited support. So that's a gamble, you know, all things considered. I would still say buy cheap and get a higher end board later if you're spending less money or not. But I'm gonna to explain to you why I bought this board and why I think it could potentially offer a fantastic value for an ultra budget gaming PC. This is a very basic board. It's two RAM slots. The IO is very basic. We have two USB 2, a combo, um, PS2 port, HDMI, DVI, and uh, VGA out. USB 3.1, probably 3.2 gigabit, 5.1 surround. That one surprises me. You have a clear, I guess it's a clear CMOS uh, button for a $60 board. Now, let's take a look at the layout of the board. So we have your 8 pin up here, so that's good. Um, you know, having a four pin definitely is gonna limit you long term. That being said, this is probably not a board for high end stuff. We have your CPU fan there. We have a fan header there and a fan header there for a micro ATX board, that's plenty. We have an M.2 slot there. We have USB 3, uh, I think what, two USB 2s? Yeah, two USB 2s, that is the front. Panel I.O. four, uh, six, uh, say three, six gigabit per second. And here's the coup de grace. Addressable and four pin 12 volt RGB and a $60 board. That's why I got this board because this is going in a ultra budget RGB uh, system. Now, the, this has, how this is configured, you have two high side, one low side VRM, okay? Now, at first, I thought this was a five plus one. However, when you look at this, you have a set here, a set here, a set there, and a set there. Now, the high side, I believe, is 4C06N, and the low side is 4C10N. But these only have high sides, they have no low sides. So I'm thinking four, and then plus three is what it's configured as. That's what I'm thinking, which, is it fantastic? I would probably say out, you know, when you get outside of the mid-range CPUs, your this board's probably not gonna be enough. But as inexpensive as this board is, if you need to go ultra budget, replacing a board honestly isn't that difficult. It's just a little bit time consuming, but it has all the hookups we need. So, yes, I know it's been reset. So let's go F2 for advanced. Let's get that out of the way so you guys can see. So, oh, oh, I'll put something on my keyboard there. Oh, we do have XMP, perfect. And CPU settings. So SVM, that is for, um, whatchamacallit. Um, okay, that's set to auto. Uh, virtualization, so enable, disable. So we have turbo mode enabled. I'm going to, can you, you can, okay, can you play with the frequency? Yeah. You can. Now, I don't know if this will hold, we're not gonna overclock it, but. Wow, AMD is a little bit confident. Okay, so 6.37 gigahertz. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, the only thing I would change is uh, precision boost overdrive which i'm not entirely sure if this actually has or not but honestly the only thing i'm concerned about is um xmp to be honest so let's do cpu fan let's do and eh, normal's fine this should all be good but let's see if it actually boots to the bios and saves
We still have a blue light. Yes, perfect. CL16, well, 16, 18, 18, 36, but perfect. Hopefully this will hold. So here's a question. Should you run out and spend $60 in the sports is what I spent on? Mm -hmm. That really depends. So here's, here's the benefits. I talked about this at the beginning of the video. It's a $60 board. $60 is less than 90, okay? So let's think about this first. Let's say you go with a B450 board now, a better B450 board, something, maybe you get like a secondhand Tomahawk or maybe a Tomahawk Max and they get on clearance, whatever have you. Here's the problem. Will it support Ryzen 4000? Some say yes, some say no. Okay. I would say grab a board like this if you really can't afford a solid B550 or X570 board. Here's why. This is probably good to about mid-tier CPUs. So maybe you want to get something like a 3100 now, which is what I have in this system going into it. And then later you get like a mid-range, like a Ryzen 5 4000 CPU, which this will probably do okay. But what happens if you want to go really high end? You're going to have to replace this board anyway. And if you get a B450 board, you're going to be replacing that board as well. So I would say spend less money on the board if you're going super budget. If you can afford a better board, go a better board. You know, there are some, you know, in a few months, I expect B550 to come down in price. Probably, you know, like I have the Pro 4 by Azeroth, that should come down close to 100 bucks in a few months, I suspect. That's a decent board. Um, the Aorus Elite I've seen come down to 140 in some cases. So, you know, definitely go for those if you can afford it. But when you're talking $500 full system, you can't afford a $120 board. So that's why I went with a $60 board. Uh, if you want to buy this, link in the description below. Do note, I get a small commission because it's an affiliate link from Amazon. Like to, if you like, dislike me, dislike it, leave a comment, get subscribed. And as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech. And I'll see y'all later on down the road.